Hey, yo, what the f***? This is a pallet right here. The late night flight is paid for by the following. Time to play the game where we find out who's capping. It is... This is the game where we find out if this is the bull Nassua, new rule, co-producer, Smart's Co. What's up with you, sir? I am well. All is good. How about you, sir? I'm doing well. Can't complain. Today's guest, we got ECPW Hudson Valley champion, Bulldog Ray Pittman. Now, I know you're like, wait, why, why did you book this? Yeah, like, it, it was going on here. So he's a black American independent pro wrestler. Nice. Okay, that's interesting. Pro wrestling. Word. That's and cool. I know that basically in our community of black America land, that's not necessarily an art yeah. that is brought up. Right. So that, that's a good thing. You bring something to the table, you know what I'm saying? Something new to the people, Some, you know, a, a perspective. Someone that looked like you, that looked like me, mm -hmm. that is doing dope things. Right. In a profession that we, some of us as a community are not interested in. Right. Don't even know about. Right. But you know what? This young man's interesting. I can't wait for y'all to check out his promo. I put his promo on the show. Okay. I call it the Baby Marvel promo. It's hilarious. Nice. Okay. It's tough. You know what I mean? It's, it's you know what I mean? For independent pro wrestling, tough. It's tough. I like it. And I think y'all will enjoy it yourself, you know? That's cool. So let's play the game. Let's go. According to CNN, Blues Clues original host Steve Burns. This guy's been getting a lot of shine lately. Yeah, man. He came back out of nowhere. People are saying he was in Afghanistan, but... <laughs> we'll get to that in a second. <laughs> so, Blues Clues original host Steve Burns explained that he left the show due to writers outgrowing and leaving the show and his receding hairline, which is an early indication that one may go bald. Smarts, is it the bullshit? that Steve Burns didn't give a call to toupee master Steve Harvey so he can keep that Barney bag. Wow. Dude had a full-grown flat top. Came back bald and, and, in, and muscular. In 89, though. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was having that toupee for a minute. Word. All right, here goes the next one. Mexican rapper Dancer has replaced his hair with surgically implanted gold chains. That's crazy. The insane look was inspired by fellow rapper Little Uzi Vert, who recently revealed he spent $24 million for that Infinity Stone diamond to be impacted on his forehead. That's crazy. Now, here's a fun fact about Little Uzi's skirt, Smarts. Wow. He said that this one, this one stone costs so much, he's been paying for it since 2017. Wow. And... As you know, that Infinity Stone got ripped off his forehead at the Rolling Loud concert earlier this year, I believe by Iron Man, Captain Marvel, and Doctor Strange. But <laughs> anyway, Smarts, is it the bull that a Mexican's roots are now from Sierra Leone? That's crazy. That is some BS. That's, that's crazy. His name is Dan Sir? Dan Sir. D-A-N-S-U-R. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, crazy. Crazy. And... Finally, and finally, here we go. According to FadeAwayWorld.net, Rich Strafella, former vice president of Hard Rock Hotel in Las Vegas, recalled a story that two ghosts of sports entertainment, Michael Jordan and Wayne Gretzky, were gambling when a waitress brought them their drinks. Jordan gave her a $5 chip as a tip until Gretzky stopped her, took that chip from her, and replaced it with a $100 chip. Oh, wow. Okay. He then turned to Michael Jordan and told him that is the proper amount to tip someone in Vegas. Smart I action. <laughs> I ask you, smarts. Go ahead. Smarts, bro. I ask you. I ask you, smarts. Smarts, I ask you. Go ahead. I ask you, smarts. We have a great episode. Smarts, I ask you. Go ahead, sir. Is it the bullshit that Gretzky made sure that with a hundred dollar chip as a tip, he made sure that when that waitress comes back, she won't go black? You ain't got to answer that. Wow. Come on, Wayne. You know that hardwood is better than ice any day. Oh. Wow. Thank wow. you. <laughs> you. Bye bye. It's a bunch of us. I'm a hand of colony. Hold on.
Everybody on a Martin, everybody marching for a young nigga like me to get tsunami on it. I'ma get it, I'ma win a baby. I'll be on my curry till I crash a bird 40 on the Yeah, I'm acting dirty if it's at the appellation to the appellation. I'ma do whatever that they take to make a black a nation. Hold on. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Sweets, and I'm your chief flight attendant. On behalf of the pilot and the entire crew, welcome aboard the late night flight. And here is your captain, the Now River of New Jersey, the pilot of Tuskegee Training, the greatest honey badger who has ever lived, the creator of Black Pilot Radio and the late night flight. Here is the victorious one, Nassour Nuru. What up, my passengers? We are first in priority and will be departing in five minutes. We appreciate your business. With that being said, this flight ain't cheap. Donate to the Cash App dollar sign the late night flight. Now, it might be a little turbulence, but we are predicting clear skies on our way back to Jersey. But before we do, do us a solid. Give us a like on our Facebook page. Follow us on IG to click the link tree in the bio. Chirp at us on Twitter at the late night flight. And you can catch all 60 episodes on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Podcast, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube, Amazon Music, The Late Night, QR Skin, wherever, wherever, wherever podcasts are available. Now let's take off. Welcome back to The Late Night Flight, Nassua, new rule. And before I bring my guest up, I just want to promote his event. So at Holy Cross Gym, okay, y'all like, what the hell is that? Holy Cross Gym, 626 County Road 22 in the great city of Middletown, New York. Your ECPW Hudson Valley Champion. The one and only Ray Bulldog Pippen will go against some bum named King Tristan, okay? For the title. And he better come home with that title. Please check out this event, Saturday, September the 25th, 2021. The bell time is at 7 p.m. So that means you need to bring your at 6.35 p.m. He is the one and only Ray Bulldog Pittman. Thank you for being on with us, but I do have a question for you. So is it Bulldog Pittman or is it Ray Pitbull Pittman? I could have sworn it should have been Ray Pitbull Pittman, but maybe I'm wrong. Talk to me. Nah, man, it's uh, Bulldog Ray Pittman. What's good, y'all? <laughs> ah, okay, okay. And then uh, let me... Woo, 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 woo. I'm, I'm going to get some dog barking or something like that in the background. You know what I'm saying? Like, I be loving that. I love your promo. Love your energy on your on your IG, like your IG lives. And you get the dogs barking. They be in there. Woo, 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 woo. I watched a couple of your shows. Um, at, well, not your shows, but your matches at ECPW. And mm. you be having the crowd barking like it's like an Ar- Arsenio Hall live TV show from 1991. I love it. Um, tell me, how do you feel when you come out the curtains and people that you know, people that you don't know, start the barking? They calling for the shot collar. For those who don't know, we'll talk about the shot collar. Shot collar, collar. All right, shot collar. All right. Imagine if you had a collar on your neck and someone electrified it. There you go, shot collar. You know what I mean, <laughs> but it's his finisher, and he's gonna talk. We'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit too. But um, yeah. How how is that energy for you, bro? Hey man, you know what? I'm gonna tell you before I go. Before I hit the curtain, I'm nervous. You know what I mean? But as soon as I step out. And all of that stuff go away. They start barking. I'm barking with them. We lit. We live. It's time to play. That's how it is. I saw your last match um, where, well, I don't know if it's your last match, but it was something that I saw on IG where old boy hit you with a cutter. I got people already like, what the hell is that? Don't worry. Mm-hmm. I, I'm going I'm to learn you. I'm going to learn you. But if you remember what Stone Cold did, he did the Stone Cold Stunner, but it was more of like a sit-down cutter. So now the, in modern wrestling, people are just doing a cutter where they just basically, it's like an RKO, basically. It's, it's, it's just from out of nowhere, boom, they just fall, hit the, uh, put the bicep on your neck just to co- contract your neck, contract your, uh, yeah, basically it's a, it's a neck move, mess, mess your neck up. So mm-hmm. boom, saw somebody hit you with the cutter. Then they get to the top rope. You recovered. You caught the dude. Now, mind you, I'm not trying to come at you physically. Like, you look strong. How tall are you, by the way? I'm like 5'11", 6'0". Oh, okay. No, that's great. That's great. You're Seth Rollins. That's what's up. I'm just saying. <laughs> like, yo, like, you caught old boy. And you know what I mean? Like, you got a, you got a, you got a great, like, athlete build. Like, it ain't like you're, like, a Aaron McDonald. It's just like, yo, like, you got a great, like, you could tell you a wide receiver or you used to be one. Because when you caught him, I was surprised. Like, oh, I didn't know he was going to do that. Then you put him in this move, 
the shock collar, which to me it looked like a uh, like a fall away slam, but you kind of did the uh, broken. I, I think they call it the broken arrow. I, I don't know. I, I'm not the wrestling person. You are. Talk to me about your finisher and how did you come up with that? Well, um, you know, about my finisher, I was just I was watching a few things, like trying to come up with something. You know, wanted to get something that you know the crowd would love and would really be into. So. You know, I was just thinking, just coming up with stuff, just thinking, just thinking, just doing different things. And then I came up with that and I was like, oh, that's tough. I didn't even watch, I didn't even watch John Cena thing. I forgot he did that, you know? And then I just changed it. When I sit down, I sit down, he like put his whole body on you or something like that, whatever he do. But, um, you know, I just did that. And then coming up with a name, I'm just, you know, in training or whatever. I'm just trying to figure out a name that one of the rookies, one of my boys, you know what I mean, Lucky Leo, uh-huh. he was like, yo. Well, I just call it the shot collar. And I'm like, bro, that sounds pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I'll just do that. <laughs> you feel me? I love so we that. just ran with that. That's a that's a that's a great name. Um, I that's dig so. that. I dig that. All right, smarts. Get ready. Put my cue my sound effects up. It is lightning round time. So with the lightning round, I don't know if you ever watched Family Feud in your day, whether it was Steve Harvey or the white people that used to be the host. But the point is on the uh, the last round called Fast Money where they put the other person in the booth and then the other person that would speak to Steve Harvey would have to answer these five questions based on a survey. So because I don't have a survey, I just give you five statements and I would just like you to answer it as fast as you possibly can. Thus, okay. the lightning round. Okay, are you ready, sir? Yes, I'm ready. All right. So name the pro wrestling finisher or name a finisher you would use if a buster G-checks you. Stone Cold Stunner Okay, nice, nice Name a female pro wrestler Who gets the all expenses Paid date treatment Anytime she wants Let me say that one more time Name a female pro wrestler Who gets the all expenses Paid date treatment Anytime she wants From you Even if it will hurt Your marriage I'm not saying you're married This is a hypothetical, sir This is a hypothetical (laughs) Okay (laughs) Um, Sasha Banks Yo, I said that. You know what? So I said Sasha Banks when I said, uh, I, I asked everybody, name a wrestler, you will let be your bodyguard. And everybody laughed at me. But I'm just saying that once she puts you in a bank statement, it's a wrap. That's all I'm saying. That's you feel saying. me? That's all, that's all I'm saying. But for me, it would be Jay Cargill. Jay Cargill. But I'm with it. I'm Jay with Cargill. it. Okay. <laughs> name name a pro wrestler. <laughs> Yo, you funny. <laughs> yes, yes, I am. Uh, name a pro wrestler who would make an awesome manager for you in your pro wrestling career. Prince Akhenaten. So who is that? I never heard of that person before. That's one of my trainers. Trainers slash mentors, man. I mean, like. He's, um, he helps me now. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I still see him like every time I train and stuff like that. When I'm home and I can't get to training and stuff like that. And I'm, even then when I'm feeling like it's not going my way, you know what I mean? He always did to say, have something to say. You know what I mean? He's had something there, put something in my ear, be like, yo, yo, you good, man. Like, you know what I mean? And it's like, okay, I got you. And then I got questions for him. He got the right answers all the time. You know what I mean? So I, I would like to have him there. Dig it. Dig it. Um, name the NFL football player you would call if you needed backup. Jabril Peppers. Yo, let me tell you. Ain't he like 6'8 or something like that? Nah, Jabril, he like uh, 6'1, 6'2. Jabril Peppers? Oh, wait, 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 wait. I'm thinking about a whole nother player. That's that's my Julius bad. Peppers. Yes, yeah, yeah, I'm thinking yeah. about Julius Peppers. You're talking about yeah, the young yeah. man that played for Passaic Catholic back in the day, right? Not even too long ago, maybe like five years ago. Uh, Paramus Catholic, yeah. Paramus he played with my Catholic. little brother. Get out, work. Yeah, yeah, I know Jabril. Jabril, you know what I mean? I, I seen Jabril play in high school like two years, three years. You know what I mean, he, <laughs> yeah, he... He really liked that for real. <laughs> That's what's up. He was a problem in Michigan, yo. A problem. Yo, yeah, a yeah. Problem. They, they should let him touch the ball. Yeah, they should let him touch the ball a lot more. But. I agree. I agree. Lego. Last one right here. I know you're into anime, so I got one for you. Name the anime character whose power lies within you. Goku. 
Of course you would say that, right? Of course. <laughs> of course. I thought you was gonna hit me with some some new cowboy bebop, some 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 anime. Nah, you know, you already know, know, you know, you know Dragon like Ball that. Z is it, man. Yeah. It, it, it was it when I was a kid. It's still it now. Like that's my favorite anime show. You know, I I, I hope they come out with something different. You know what I mean, because I like it. But all the new stuff now, like um Naruto, it's okay. You know, it's but it don't measure up to Dragon Ball Z to me. It's to me. Stay tuned, y'all. We'll be right back with more Late Night Flight. Ladies and gentlemen, the captain has turned off the fasten seatbelt sign, and you may now move around the cabin. However, we always recommend to keep your seatbelt fastened through the trials and tribulations while you're seated. In a few moments, the flight attendants will be passing around the drink menu as well as the brunch menu. We only have chicken or waffles or both. So choose wisely. And thank you for flying the Late Night Flight. This segment, I want to dedicate it to finding out where were you before wrestling? Were you on the football field? Were you working at the post office? Were you just down and out in a gutter somewhere with almost a needle in your arm and said, nah, I can't do this, yo. I got to do wrestling. Like, how does this, how did, how did everything happen? How did it come into fruition? Well, um, I started wrestling three years ago. It was August 26th of uh, 2018. Um, before that, I was in school. You know I mean, I was going, I started out after high school, I went to Passing Catholic. After high school, I went to a fake prep school called NC Tech, you know, North Carolina Tech. Um, then that messed me up a lot, you know, but then I went to Lackawanna. I messed myself up and I found myself at Montclair State, you know. Um, I didn't finish school yet. I got about a year left, but I was playing football. I was chasing the chasing the NFL dream pretty much. Right. You know what I mean? Like I really wanted to play football. Like I really wanted to do it. Like, you know, but I had to really sit there. After I had my daughter, you know, I had to really sit down and realize like, yo, this this ain't that. Like I gotta find something else, you know, find something that's that would better suit you. You know what I mean? I was like twenty six at the time. How did you know what I mean? now, so, if I may, I wanna ask you about that because I know me as a songwriter. I remember in my twenties how I longed for being a rap star. I really wanted to be a, a star, and I was with these groups, and I'm working towards doing that. We're I'm I started writing for Mr. Cheeks from the Lost Boys. Started writing for Tretch from Naughty by Nature. I'm thinking that I'm very close to a door, at least to at least just talk to people that can take me to a whole other place. And mm. it didn't happen in that way. And I didn't, I, to this day, I still don't know how to compartmentalize with all of it because realistically, I got to work the next day. I got to pay rent. I got to just do other things where my mom won't let me grieve over it. Mm -hmm. what, what, was there a moment in your life where you had a moment to grieve or to really just sit down and be like, damn, I really wanted it. I wanted it. It ain't happened. Man, f this shit. I'm really mad, but it's all right. I'm going to, go on to the next thing or it wasn't no time to complain or mope about that. It was like, nah, just on to the next thing. Nah, it was just like on to the next thing. Like, you know, I, I love football to death. You know what I mean? Like, I love football, man. Like, I'm a diehard Giants fan even though we we kind of like not doing the way I want us to do. But, you know, yeah, let's I, I'm a diehard Giants fan. Let's not talk you know? about that. We're not going to yeah, talk about that. I, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. You're right. <laughs> 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 yeah, you know, um, I love college football. I love Texas and um, Miami and Ohio State. You know, um, you know, I, I'm really big on football. I'm big on all sports, but football was it. You know what I mean? And basketball too. But you know, I just it was just more like a you know, Craig. Like you know, you 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 got your daughter. You know what I mean? And you can't keep sitting here trying to chase a dream. That's you know, not going. That's people like that's like younger than you have a short window in the NFL anyway. You know what I mean? So it's like you can find something else. There's a lot of stuff out here. What 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 you gonna do? It was either gonna be wrestling or boxing. You know what I mean? And um, I'm glad I chose wrestling. Yo, uh, I mean, bro, you're doing one hell of a job with it. How how is it being at this level right now? As far as in this indie scene, of course. I know that the end game is taking it to another level and we'll talk about that on the next segment, but let's just talk about here at in a, on an indie level, being in New York, being in New Jersey, running around with the title. 
again, how is that feeling? And then more importantly, um, how is the wear and tear on, on your physical, on your body, basically? Uh, doing all these events, taking a beating, giving a beating, giving it to the crowd as far as your love and affection for the, the sport of pro wrestling? Um, You know, I still feel like I'm like 19, 20. <laughs> you feel me? Like, and I'm 29. In the world. That's the best feeling in the world. Go ahead. You feel me? <laughs> so it's like, you know, I can still move a little bit. I still play football a little bit. I play A7FL. I was you know, going to you about league. that. I saw yeah. like four or five trophies you over here thinking you Drake at the Grammys. I see you. Yeah, here, that, yeah, bro. We just won. Um, we just won our last cha- uh, our last championship in uh in July. You know, and I won the um the title in July. So I, July was a great month for me. I ain't even gonna hold you, but um, you know, like I just I keep my I keep up with my body. You know what I mean? I, I uh, I'm not gonna say I eat like the right way all the time, but I do eat right. You know, I'll train, you know what I mean? I'll work out, you know, um, my job keep me on my feet. So, you know, I'm, I'm always moving there too. So, you know, it's about staying in shape pretty much. Like you, you, your body do get older and, you know, after games and after matches, you start to feel a little, a little more sore than, you know, me would when you was like 17, 16, you know what I mean? Like it, it lingers a little bit more, but, it's a great feeling. You know what I mean, the, the the after a game, after a match, like that's a good the soreness is a good feeling. To so me. so basically, like, you telling me a super kick to the face is definitely not allowing you to go out that same night on Friday. So so basically, on Saturday night, September twenty fifth, when you face Tristan and you may get body slam, may get a super kick. Well, he's a big dude. I don't know if he'll do a super kick, but whatever he likes to do, and he'll do it to your face. Not in that way, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We talking about wrestling here. All right. <laughs> what we're saying, what, what I'm asking you is basically Saturday night, we, we're not going out to the lobby to celebrate. Basically, you're going home, you're licking your wounds, and, you, and you're coming back stronger than ever the next day. Is that what you're telling me? Nah, man. If we going out, we going out. <laughs> I'll be all right. <laughs> you feel me? I'll be all right. <laughs> what the f***? This that pilot f- right here. When you in the ring and you're training and all that good stuff, what is the 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 rap artist or hip hop artist of preference that you're listening to while you're training? Ah uh, man, it's a I got a variety of them, but it's more it's really more so like trap rap. I'm gonna say that like I'm a big Gucci fan, okay. you know, big okay. big Rick Ross fan, Lil Wayne fan. Uh, I'm I'm really with the uh, paper route movement right now, like um. Young Dolph and Key Glock. Oh, those my boys you know right mean? there. Yo, yeah, those yeah, my dudes know, I, I, right there. I, when I saw your uh, promo, not to cut you off, but real quick, when I saw your promo for the uh, the event at Middletown, please everybody be it, be there September 25th, and I heard the Cops and Robbers song from Key Glock. Don't think I don't know, bro. I heard yeah. <laughs> I said, oh, now nah, this is my man right here. Like, oh, this is my man right here. What he know about that Key Glock. But continue. Yeah, man, you know, uh, it's really a uh, key Glock, man. That's that's my boy. Like, I was just outside before we started doing this, and you know, he's rocking the Glock. You know what I mean? That's you know, that's that's who I listen to. Um, I like Uzi, you know, but if I could be realistic though, the one dude that really got it right now in hip hop to me is Lil Baby. Now you're gonna hold you. You know, it's you know funny. I mean? uh, my, my co-producer, and this guy's 40 years old, and he's willing to tell people that. As far as the last three years, little baby is the king of rap. That's that's what he likes to tell people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, Drake, Drake lit. Don't get me wrong. He got he got the lyrics. Like Drake and Kendrick, they got the lyrics. You know what I mean, they got it. I mean, as far as making songs and anything like that, they got it. But as far as like the flow and, and, and swag or like every day, it's little baby and probably even the baby, but really little baby. Honestly, ain't nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with either one of those answers. I think Kendrick will mop the floor with Drake. Either baby you want, put diapers on him and keep it pushing. That's just my personal <laughs> opinion. But I understand. I understand because I do. Uh, my favorite little baby song is Pure Cocaine. Without no question, Pure Cocaine is my yo. That's my little baby. Yeah, I, my mom is. Um, I ain't gonna hold you. Mine is probably Social Distance. Okay, Social, social distance, distance is fly. Social Distance yeah. is fly. Definitely, definitely. Um, so. Here, here we are, bro. You are, like you said, you're 5'11", you're 6 feet. 
basically Bruce Pritchard and Vince McMahon is like, oh yeah, okay, he got height on him. That's what's up. Let's let's keep mm-hmm. watching. Let's keep seeing what he what he doing. Tony Khan, the Young Bucks, Cody, Kenny Omega, they probably may see you and be like, oh nah, sign him right now because they're, like their style as far as we're talking about developmental. I'm not talking about like what I see on TV. Um, they love the indie stars and the indie stars love AEW and WWE is more like, it's fun. People don't believe me when I say this, but I feel as though, it, and I could be wrong, if you're not like a decorated athlete from another sport already and you wanted to just come to wrestling, like you're an amateur wrestler that be at the Olympics or you're a WNBA player or you're a football player, basketball player, something like that. Honestly, you could just walk in. You can just, you need to go to the performance center and just walk in and just see what happens. Now you might get cut fast, but Mm. You might walk up in there and be like, oh, okay. Now, mind you, I don't know. I'm just making the assumptions based on podcasts that I listen to that that basically uh, talk nothing but wrestling and talk about the business 24-7 nonstop. I'm just making jokes as I go along. But what say you to all of that? Do you, uh, even though you're a champion right now and you're doing the matches that uh, East Coast Pro Wrestling is uh, throwing at you, of course, because you got to get your money through that wave, but... Do you keep your ear to the ground as far as these major promotions? And not talking about just those two. I mean, even MLW or ROH, where they're looking for that that new fresh face. And even though, hey, I, in my opinion, you'll be there, sure. But maybe you're still working on your promo skills or your, your in-ring wrestling. I don't know. But do you ever like take a step back and be like, yo? Yeah, it's about that time. I'm about to yeah, I'm about to ROH this right now, bro. It's about to go down. How does that work for you? Um, well, right now, you know, like I'm I might be ready, but I, I'm not sure. To be honest, to me, to me, I feel like I have a whole lot more to learn. You know what I mean? Like as far as like being an athlete or a super athlete, as you as some people would say, like right. it could get me far. But you know, if somebody was to step in front of me with more character and they, they they like they character more they like their character more than they like mine. You know what I mean? He's a little bit more outgoing, you know, he could do he's not as as athletic uh as athletic as I am, but he can talk. You like know the what charisma mean? He, just, you the know, charisma's just off the charts at this point. I got yeah, you. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, you know, he could he they'll give him that spot over me. You know what I mean? Cause everybody could do a back I can't do a backflip, but everybody else could. You know what I mean? I could jump high. Right. You know I, I could, I'm strong, you know what I mean? I, you know, I'll do a lot of other stuff, but, you know, flipping, I, I'll probably do a front flip, but like a back flip, I, I get nervous in the air, so I don't want to break my neck, you know, but, um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, yeah, they'll probably pick him over me, probably. I think, in my opinion, I don't know. Well, you know what you gotta, you know gotta do. Song. Yeah, you know what you gotta do when that happens. You gotta just put that mother in the shot collar. That's all. Oh, world, <laughs> oh, world bro, you can talk better you than me. me. Yeah, nah, yeah, you, yeah, you, you know, you I gotta, you, you know, than me because you can talk. I'm about to grab your little monkey up right now. Get over here. And yeah, put you through, put you in the shot collar for me. I get something. <laughs> you know what I mean? I gotta show something. You get know what I mean? But um, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's just, it's just like, it's just like doing a combine, you know what I mean? It's just like playing in college football and trying to get noticed by uh, the NFL or CFL. Same thing. You got know what it. I mean? Same exact thing. You know, you just got to work hard like you doing that. Same thing. Do you ever think about, hey, maybe I should go overseas, maybe go to New Japan or somewhere in, I forgot the name of the wrestling uh, promotion that's in Germany, but maybe even the UK, not saying NXT UK, but just the UK scene, because uh, I believe from what I hear, the fans over there in uh, England, they they love wrestling, they they channel mm-hmm. along with it, they're, just, they're super fans for the most part, and a lot of people get over on that side of town. I'm just asking questions here, you know what I mean? Like, again, again you are the Hudson Valley champion of ECPW, you can do whatever the f*** you want, you can put me in a shot collar, I'm just asking questions, sir, please don't kill me. <laughs> nah, man. Um, I thought about it. You know, I still think about it now. But what's holding me back about like really going for it overseas though is my daughter. You know what I mean? I, I don't want to leave her. You know what I mean? Like she got to go to school. You know, she five. You know, she got to go to school. You know, she got to hang with her friends. You know, she got to grow up. And me being over there, 
if I take her over there with me, it might not be, you know, good for her. And I don't want to, I don't want that, I don't want that to happen. You know what I mean? So that's why I'm pushing so hard for everything like AEW, WWE, uh, MLW, you know, uh, all of them really, uh, TNA, ROH, you know, HOG, all of them, you know, I'm trying to get somewhere, you know what I mean? But overseas, I, I would, I, it's not like, I, I'm not going to like say no to it, but it's really like a thought. I really got to sit down and think about it. Hey, yo, what the f You're a champion right now. Mm -hmm. Um, Who did you defeat to become the Hudson Valley champion of ECPW? I defeated, uh, defeated uh, Migs. His name is Migs. Yeah. M-I-G-Z or M-I-G-S? M-I-G-S, I think. Okay, okay. M-I-G-S, yeah. Now, now... Um, what was y'all few? Uh, mind you, I, I don't I don't follow ECPW all the time. So for all of our listeners, I just wanted to know what was the beef about? What what happened? Why y'all two had to get into the ring? Or was it just straight for the money? Like ha, ha, what what happened? There was no beef. I just wanted the belt. I know that's right. <laughs> I that's know. all it was, man. I just wanted the belt. I need that status. I need I need to be one notch above you. I need to run this promotion a little something, something. I got my own things I want to do. Yo, mm -hmm. let me let me let me let me get in this ring and uh, you know what I'm saying, get this win real fast. I gotta do other things. I know that's right, yo. I know yeah, that's man. Right. You know, it, 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 when you like whatever you're doing, you gotta feel like you it. You gotta feel like you the man. You gotta feel like a champion. So I walk around like I'm a king. You know what I mean? That's how I do. I walk around like a king. Now I got the belt on me to show that I am the king. You know, do then you, I gotta defend this belt. Do you work? Do you think you work better when that target is on your back? Because when you're a champion, everybody is coming for you. Everybody's coming for your neck. Everybody wants your status. Wants that new pay raise that you just got from ECPW. They want all of that. So do you recognize that? Do you do you relish in it? Like, yeah, go ahead, come on, let's go. Or you like, dang, I gotta look everywhere I go. Dang, is somebody just wanting to fight? Like, this is crazy. I can't even like sit here and chill with my daughter for like three hours. Dang. Nah, I'm with it all. My daughter with it too. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we with it. <laughs> like, you know, you you want the belt, you want the bread. All right, you gotta get it from me. And it's, you know what I mean? And it's straight like that. Like, that's how I'm coming the whole time. Like, I'm not scared to defend it against anybody, big, small, monsters, aliens, whatever you whatever you wanna be. You gonna come here and I'm gonna put these paws on you, straight like that. We're about to get to our next destination, but before we do, we strongly recommend to drink responsibly and pass that bong to me. You feel me? <laughs> I got bars. Oh, and give us a follow on Instagram at The Late Night Flight. And give us a like on Facebook, The Late Night Flight. And thank you for flying The Late Night Flight. What up, my passengers? This is your captain speaking, the greatest handy badger who has ever lived, Nassua, new rule. And I asked Bulldog Ray Pittman, in his words, why he thinks black Americans do not watch the sport of pro wrestling. Well, I feel like, you know, it's shunned upon a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, it's like, you know, Oh, man, how can I say this? Because, you know, I've been thinking this for dumb long. Like, you know, because when I told people that, like, you know, I was a, I was nervous to tell people I was a wrestler at, at, at first. You know what I mean? Because, you know, as a kid, when I liked it, I was kind of picked on it about it a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, it's still, I didn't care. You know what I mean? Because I liked it. And, and I still like other stuff. So they, you know, didn't really care about that. I like wrestling. But, you know. It's, it's like, it's not in the community, you know what I mean? Like, what's big in the community is sports, you know? What's big in the community is, in the culture is, is uh, music, you know what I mean? Like, that's the two biggest things, you know what I mean? Because that's what's pushed in our heads as when we're babies, you know what I mean? When we're kids, like, yo, I want to play football, I want to play basketball, uh, I want to be a dancer, I want to be a singer, I want to be a rapper, you know what I mean? But right. nobody really wants to be a wrestler, you know what I mean? They feel like wrestling is more for like white people and it's not, it's you know what I mean? It's, it's just like everything else, you know what I mean? Just like they feel like soccer is more for Spanish people and it's not. The whole world plays soccer. Word up, absolutely. You know what I mean? Like, so, you know, I don't know. It's, it's just, 
I don't want to say ignorant way of thinking because it's not really ignorant if you, if that's like what you're brought up to. So I can't really call people ignorant for that. Like that's not ignorant. They just don't know. You know what I mean? And it's just something to tell the kids like, yo, you could do other things besides this. Right. You know what I mean? Absolutely. That, that's really all it is, you know? Yo, I'm, that was the main reason why I had to do this interview with you, bro, because you're doing something that, of course, is not normalized in our community, sure. But more importantly, you're someone with a title. That means there's people outside of our race that have faith and trust in you. Mm -hmm. So I think it would be dope. It would be justice if the community, the people that look like us, would be behind that. What up, my passengers? This is your captain speaking. Just want to let my passengers know on Saturday, September 25th at Holy Cross Gym, your ECPW Hudson Valley champion, the one and only Bulldog Ray Pittman will be going against King Tristan for the ECPW HV Heavyweight Championship on Saturday, September 25th at Holy Cross Gym. Bell time is 7 p.m., 626 County Road in the great town of Middletown, New York. Yo, I asked the young man, I asked the king, yo, what do you think about Big E winning the WWE Championship? Now, some of us are like, what are you talking about? Are you serious? You're going to talk about wrestling? But here's the thing. In wrestling, we know that there's a lack of not only black American wrestlers that get opportunities to win the championship, we don't have a lot of black Americans that actually win the championship. Now, some have, as of late, Kofi Kingston to be one, Bobby Lashley to be another. But what happened on Monday Night Raw not too long ago was Big E, who is another black American wrestler who is amazing, by the way, beat Bobby Lashley to become the WWE champion. So here's the thing. That's one black person losing the title to another black person. That doesn't happen too much. Actually, that doesn't happen at all in the uh, in the sport of pro wrestling. So we asked Bulldog, what does he think about that? I'm happy for Big E. Like he, you know, he came in, you know, he was a big dude. When he got seen him when he first came in. Like, I mean, I, 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 I think him and Kofi came in in the same time. So I was watching it, still watching it around there. So I seen him when he came in and to see where he is now, it's pretty dope. You know what I mean, to even see what Bobby is now, it's pretty dope. Like it's a um, it's a list. I, I posted it on my Instagram. Um, I'm number three sixteen on it. You know, it's the uh, the black wrestlers list. You know what I mean? So it's like black uh, excellence or whatever. Black rest top five hundred black wrestlers or whatever. Bobby Lashley is number two, and Big E is number eleven. You know, so who's number one? Uh, it's a girl. I forget her name. It's like uh, I don't. I forget her name. It's like Alyssa something. Okay. Alice something. Yeah, okay. I, I forget her name. No problem. But, you know, they're up there, you know, and um, to see them up there and then to see them go, you know, number 11 versus number two, that's like watching college football, watching number 11 team beat the number two team. You know what I mean? Like, Got that's it. what that was for me. Got you know it. what I mean? Like, Big E was number 11. Bobby Lashley was number two. You know what I mean? And he beat the number two. So that was, I was souped for that. I was, you know what I mean? That was like my little personal thing. I was, I was hyped for that. What up, my passengers? This is your captain speaking. Please follow Bulldog Ray Pittman at Blue Chip 2 Uno. So that is at B-L-U-E-C-H-I-P, the number two, and then Uno. U N. Oh, the young man has some hilarious promos. It's actually not hilarious because he got to talk crap to people. He got to let people know that, hey, look, I got a target on my back, but I'm going to hit you first. So he lays out this promo for his opponent, King Tristan, that he's going to be facing on Saturday, September 25th. Check this promo out. I call it the baby mama promo. Check this out. All right. I'm going to holler at you. Tristan Law. We came up here on social media talking about my daughter and being with my baby mother when the whole time I thought we were friends. Like, you called me to do the podcast, I was dead. You called me to come chill, I was dead. Dog, any problem you had, I inherited. Think surrogates. Because even though that beef wasn't mine, I still carried it. That's loyalty. And everything you just said showed me that you had none. So I went and talked to God about it. He said, son, 
I want you to give Tristan Law the biggest shot collar and pin him one, two, three. Then after that, I want you to go to Mama Law's house. I want you to walk into Mama Law's living room. Raise your right hand. The hell out of Mama Law. And if she asks you why, you tell her because God told me to. I said, amen, Lord. But to tell you the truth, I was going to do that anyway. You see, Tristan Law, you let that bully trick you and kick you to, and kick you down the stairs all those years ago. But I ain't going to do you like that, dog. Nah, instead, I'm going to just walk out in front of all the good people in Middletown, New York, and whip your ass. You see, dog, you want my baby mother so bad, then you can have her. It means nothing to me. But I'm definitely walking out of the Holy Cross gym with my daughter in one hand and the belt in the other. Bottom line, Tristan Law, it's time to play. And I got a shot collar with your name on it. Hey, hey, hey. We're going to cut a promo. So I'm pretty sure if you go on his uh, Instagram, you, you want to tell people your Instagram handle real fast? Yeah, man, my Instagram is uh, Blue Chip Pre Uno. That's uh, B L U E C H I P, the number two, U N O. Now, the reason why I'm telling you about his handle is because I want him, well, I want all of us to help him get his fo uh, his following up, keep getting his following up because this dude, yo, he's, he, he, he doesn't need us. He's already the talent, but it's just good to just be like, yo, I was there from the beginning. I was there from the beginning. Now I got free tickets at SummerSlam. Yo, thank you, Ray. That's how you got to look at it. That's how you got to look at it. Come on now. We trying to get this IC build at WrestleMania. Come on now. Mm, get with yeah, it. That's dope. That's that, dope. That would be crazy, right, dog? Oh, my God. I, I would love to just be walking down the ramp with you and looking at all the women. Look at us. I'm definitely taking my shirt off when I'm walking down that ramp. Women going to like this. <laughs> I'm the greatest handy badger who has ever lived. You know what I'm saying? I might be five six, but I'm cut. Don't don't get it. Don't now get you it look a little stocky in your pictures, bro. I'll be out here like, yeah, what? Who want a suplex right now? I'm already close to the ground. You don't want it. Wow. You don't want it. I'm Ray Mysterio. I'm Ray Mysterio without the flips. All right? Like, uh, <laughs> ooh, that's a flipping dude too. He is a flipping dude. I don't do no flips. I ain't yo. Don't, yep. No. 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 I could do it, but no. You know what I'm saying? I just want to ground and pound you the whole time. Pause. That's what uh, I want to do. But so the point I'm making is with the promo act is instead of talking shit about Tristan Law, who we know you're gonna mop the floor with. All right, we know it's going to be a fight because he looked like a fighter, but we expect you to mop the floor with him, okay? I'll bring that Mr. Clean with you just in case you need that, all right? I got you, bro. But I want you to cut a promo on a relationship topic, okay? My people going to love this. Cut a promo on a relationship topic. So here we are. I need you, Bulldog, to cut a promo on women that believe that you, as a man, should pay all the bills in a relationship. Go. Okay, hold up. So, so you think that just because I'm the man, I'm supposed to pay the mortgage, pay the rent, pay the car note, pay the car insurance, pay for school, pay for... Now, I got a question for you. Who the hell do you think you are? Let me ask you this right now, please. Because bills are supposed to be 50-50. I get 50 you get 50. Ain't gonna be a 100-way street. I'm gonna be broke and you be with money? You crazy, girl. Give me 50, give me half. I'll give you half. Now I go pay these bills. And I want food when I get home. Straight like that. Masterful. Masterful. Hey, yo, um, I, I, I hope uh, Triple H, you're, you're taking notes, brother. What's going on here? Come on now. <laughs> Come on now. All right. I want you to... All right. Here goes, here goes one more. I mm -hmm. want you to cut a promo on a woman that would ask you, does it matter if you lie about how many women you slept with? Do it matter? Why does it matter about how many women I slept with? You're the only one here. You're the only one in my house, in my bed, here with me. All the other girls from before, it don't matter. It's called the past for a reason. It's an X for a reason. You here with me, you stay here with me. You hold your spot. This your kingdom. This your crown. This your throne. Own it.
We got the champion Bulldog Pittman versus Tristan Law. Please check this out. Yo, do you have uh, anything you want to say about September the 25th or just anything in general about what's going on with you and why the people need to keep following you and keep supporting what you're doing right now in the world of pro wrestling? Um, yeah, man, I just, I got something to say to all, like, all the kids and, like, not even just the kids, everybody in general, you know what I mean? You guys, like, whatever you guys are doing, like, whether it's sports, acting, dancing, whatever it is, make sure you do it to the fullest, you know what I mean? Like, don't let nobody tell you, you ain't this, you ain't that, nah, you keep going till you get it. You know what I mean? Like, and then you look back at them and be like, yeah, look, you said I couldn't do this, and now I'm here. You know what I mean? Don't let nobody tell you you can't do nothing. You know what I mean? Keep going strong, keep going hard. Do it 110, 120. Matter of fact, do it 300%. And God will bless you, for real. You know what I mean? Everything happens for a reason. You manifest your destiny. And keep climbing, keep going. That's all. Tristan Law, I got a shot collar with your name on it. That's it. Thank you for flying the late night flight. Shout out to all the pilots who contribute to the Fastest Rising podcast. If you want to contribute, DM us at the late night flight. Hey, yo, what the f***? This is a pilot right here.